Pendarvis with Quadrant Builders Pendarvis Company here with you today. With us we have Justin Guy of Phoenix, Phoenix Factory. Factory. Old Industrial Pottery. Old yes. Industrial Pottery. Um, so you can see here in the background we've got some pots and things. I'm going to let Justin explain what we see. Well we've got two main sides of our shop that we like to uh, sort of showcase. We have the old pots over there and most of those are from the 1800s, the glory days of the Industrial Pottery tradition. And then my meager contribution, which is the new old instrument pottery, I guess you'd say, on this side. So we try and give people a real sense of the history and let them appreciate that. And then hopefully they appreciate what we do here and maybe take a piece home as well. Yeah. And um, the great thing about Edgefield pottery is that it's in the Smithsonian, uh, correct? A couple of Dave pieces, a couple of Chandler pieces, yeah. some of our bigger names in pottery history. So who are Dave and Chandler for those who are not familiar with Edgefield pottery? Two of our more famous people, I guess you'd say. There were hundreds of potters in the tradition, but they mm -hmm. sort of represent uh, the hundreds that, that really existed. But they're the most famous. Uh, Dave specifically because he was an enslaved African American for most of his life. Mm -hmm. But he could read and write exceedingly well. He used very large words, magnanimous, uh, corporosity, shijishi, you know, words we, we use all the time, of course. Um, but yeah. exceedingly intelligent and exceedingly bold to write his poetry on the sides of his vessels. And now, correct me if I'm wrong, but the local story I've heard is that he learned to write and read and write, that's backwards, um, from working at the Edgefield Advertiser. He definitely worked at the Edgefield High, which was the predecessor to the uh -huh. Edgefield Advertiser. And whether or not he was a typesetter and whether or not he could read and mirror image and backwards, which is a, is a, is a wonderful idea, he may have been able to do that, but he was not specifically trained uh, as a typesetter. He grew up as a potter. And uh, we, we see him in his early years in documents, uh, turning away, uh, really getting those formative years as a teenager and as a young adult, uh, working in the pottery studio. So he really was a full lifetime potter, yeah. but, but probably had some experience in the, in the Edgefield Hive as well. No, yeah, just the whole story, like that's how he learned to read and write, because it's very unusual correct, sure. for a slave in that time period to know how to read and write. So that's what makes some of his pots so valuable. Very valuable, and um, we, we just don't get a whole lot of expression from the African American community from this time. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they're written on clay really enshrine and ensure that they're going to be here uh, for a very long time. Much dirtier than paper. You can't burn with the Alexandria Library, right? Sadly, yeah, we they have nothing from the Alexandria Library. They should have written on clay. Exactly. Um, so, some of our more modern uh, potters, predecessors, tell us a little bit about the Pharaohs. Well, in the background here, we have Terry, who sadly passed away just last year, but he passed away at the ripe old age of 96, mm -hmm. and went out with his boots on, as we say. He still had plans to open up a whole other shop. Uh, was very gung-ho until, until the very end. And his son, Steve, was uh, uh, my teacher back in the day. So mm -hmm. I apprenticed under Steve Farrell. Uh, don't want to give too many uh, years away, but um, a long time ago. And then uh, that took over for Steve when he retired uh, probably seven or eight years ago. Yeah. Well, you're sold spring chicken. Don't worry. <laughs> I keep telling myself this is uh, clay, but it doesn't wash out anymore. It uh, um, it's, frays up a bit. Yeah, I mean, I plan to live till I'm over 100, so we've got plenty of time. They, uh, people are living longer and healthier these days. They are. So, yeah, I hope so. Well, Let's make it there. Yes. I wish it. You might get there first. <laughs> <laughs> I certainly will. <laughs> Um, well, thank you for having us in today, and we'll have to come back another day and take a look at some of his um, pots on the wheel and as they progress to his fine ring. We hope you join yeah. us for that. Well, thank you. Thank you. Come stop in. Um, what are your hours of operation? Thursday, Friday, and Saturday for sure, 10 to 4, but usually I'm out and about and around the studio at the time as well, and uh, they can find us on Google and the usual avenues of information. Yep, and he's right off the square. You just go down Potter's Alley. Potter's Alley, okay. Park on the Square. Um, Park on the Square, the beautiful new square with lovely renovations. And come check out some, one of the hidden treasures of Edgefield. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Bye.